My name is Killian Bartsch. I'm the Secretary General of Fermi 2016. Um, we just finished the opening ceremony this morning where uh, a lot of distinguished guests, we even had the Director General of the United Nations Office in Geneva who was present. Uh, we had very interesting speeches and it uh, was truly a eye-opening ceremony because we had the participation of a, a Syrian refugee explaining the details about his uh, odyssey over to come from um, Syria and it was really a very moving and interesting experience. Um, now we've moved on to the uh, actual model United Nations part of the conference where delegates are now divided up into their uh, respective assemblies and re representing countries and simulating the debates of the UN and trying to work towards uh, solutions. This year we have over 20 countries from four different continents and uh, the diversity is just really incredible because we have people that come from the United States as well as from Kenya and Ivory Coast and Turkey or Egypt as well as many European countries and um, you truly notice how despite what might seem as being cultural barriers we manage to come together in this desire for spreading the values of the United Nations and trying to fight towards creating a better world and uh, with all these other students we noticed how in the end we have so much in common despite our initial and obvious differences. The problems that will be addressed at the WMO part of the conference are international migration and uh, development. So this combines two really undividable aspects of the current geopolitical problems in my opinion uh, because migration and refugees is really the main problem we're facing right now and it or its origins stem a lot from on one side economic problems and development inequalities but at the same time it also originates from terrorism which is where we come to the other part of our conference in the WTO uh, is hosted uh, three separate assemblies simulating the executive councils of the NATO, the Arab League and the African Union. We have people coming from over 25 countries and uh, they are always uh, assigned countries by the organizational team that have nothing to do with where they come from. So they're basically in a relatively tough position, sometimes representing a major power or an unknown country that very few people know of and suddenly they have to represent the interests of this country in debate. So they really have to go in depth into the history and understand all the past, what has happened in this country and who are their friends, who are their allies, who are their sworn enemies that they just can't make compromises with, why, and you really can't, you have to think for yourself to some extent, but you just have to set yourself in their mind. It's almost like a piece of theater. You have to learn a role and act as if you were the person in this role. And it's extremely difficult because you realize that suddenly it's not all about finding the solution to climate change. It's also that you have to represent the interests of your country and you only have a set space that you can move around in. I mean, China will never be allowed to agree completely that they will stop CO emitting CO2 this year. It, they just have to stay in the boundaries set by the governments currently in place. The MUN conference starts out with a period of lobbying where basically everybody is in an un un informal manner allowed to move around freely and discuss with other uh, part delegations what their opinions are. They agree what they want to see done and then by putting this together they can already start counting. Oh, in my, dele in my assembly there's 25 people, I need 13 votes to get this resolution passed. So they see, okay, Egypt, they're on my side, they want to vote for me. And then there's all this calculations and, oh, will you vote for this? Okay, and then in exchange maybe I'll give a concession to what you, your country wants. And you really learn the skills of negotiating in this first period, but also afterwards during formal debate of uh, giving speeches because everybody has to go up front and sometimes you're in front of an assembly of 200 people and this is a situation that most students have never been exposed to and it's truly an amazing opportunity to be able to have this almost practice terrain where you can just go up front there and you don't have to worry too much about your personal views or that somebody's going to criticize them because you're only doing this for the country that you're representing and then in the second period of uh, the conference formal debate they will uh, be a list of speakers and you can ask questions to the speaker and you have to address them very formally. You're not allowed to say I or you. You have to say the delegation of and um, other 
diplomatic formalities and you truly grasp that at the UN it's not just like, okay, I got this and you got this, let's put it together. You really have to work through a whole diplomatic procedure to understand what the other country wants and then see how this could fit in with your interests. We have these two subjects, international migration development and terrorism that are divided up in all these different committees and uh, councils and they all kind of look at it in a different aspect. But then on the third day, in the general assemblies, they bring this all together to try to create an ultimate so solution or ways of improving these great problems that that are so important nowadays we have we can do something here as students we can write these resolutions and they will be sent to the UN and we can almost show them how they could be doing their job without obviously trying to be patronizing or anything it it's sometimes refreshing to see a different perspectives on it and this is I believe what to some extent Model United Nations does.